Get in the way back machine, kids. Steve Austin came out, and he was talking about Gorilla Monsoon, and said he was going to buy him a stalk of bananas and shove them up his ass. <laughs> Uh, hey, hey, fellow crappers, it's your old buddy and your old pal, Artie Reynolds here once again with WrestleCrap Radio. And as always, on the other end of the tin can string is the Umaga to my Vicky Guerrero, Mr. Blake Braxton. I am sober. How's it going? It's going good. I haven't been given a pink slip or quit my job. I am sad to see Vicky Guerrero leave, though. And everybody always says, everyone always makes fun of her weight. Mm -hmm. how she's, and how she's not like a typical diva. Right. But if you watch the Eddie Guerrero story, she looks kind of cute, man. She looks like she's bolt up for a siesta. Oh, Vicky. What mm -hmm. has a longer life expectancy? Raw GM or Russell Crap Radio TNA correspondent? Um, oh. <laughs> Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Believe it or not, kids, this radio program is sponsored. It's sponsored by our good friends over at Unequivocally. Not net. The general manager on a wrestling show used to not exist. You would have a Jack Tunney figurehead president that you would Correct. see not very often. Kind of, right. I don't understand I probably... why there is now a GM on every single show. We don't need them. Yeah. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. We actually have another sponsor. That would, in fact, be Father's Day. <laughs> com. And they have sent ad copy. Growing up, Adam Copeland never got to experience Father's Day. It was torture in grade school, watching his friends and classmates make Father's Day presents. Our Father's Day was here once more, and Adam finally had a reason to celebrate. Adam awoke to the furious wails of an infant, struggling to sit up. He remembered two things. He remembered it was Father's Day, and he was a father. A week prior. His wife, Amy, had given birth to a baby girl. Nine pounds, three ounces, with her mother's fiery red hair, Emerson Bernadette Copeland had already stolen her father's heart. Morning, Adam murmured, feeling his wife sink into bed. Rolling over, he watched in silent awe as Amy began to nurse Emerson. I, I, Sir Alec, I can't tell you how much I've missed these stories. Ah. Amy giggled. Why? Why are you laughing? Amy's tickling me, she laughed, mid-yawn. Emerson had Amy's hazel eyes. She had Adam's facial structure. All in all, she was a beautiful baby. Do you know what today is? Amy asked, placing a firmer grip on the baby. Father's Day, the first of many as a family, Adam said, watching Emerson suckle hungrily. You are so beautiful. Who 
Amy asked. The fuzzy flannel of the baby's pajamas tickling her delicate fingertips. Both of you, Adam murmured. I look terrible. My hair is a mess. I can't get the hang of breastfeeding. The baby's supposed to increase laundry. Not mommy who can't control her flow of breast milk or the hang of using pads. <laughs> Amy burst into tears. Adam would never admit how beautiful he found her to be. For one thing, she wouldn't believe him. And then she would proceed to list all her flaws. He wished she could see how beautiful she truly was. James! Don't say that! You're gorgeous! Especially when you're breastfeeding. You look so angelic, so content when you nourish her! Adam said, gently wiping her tears away. There's a solution to every problem you listed. Like? Amy asked, burping the baby. After the baby belt, she switched breasts. For the throw problems, use breast pads. For the pad problems, learn how to use them. Double up, he said, sighing. Then he removed his shirt, removing a white gauze bandage from his shoulder blade. He turned to reveal a tattoo. She gasped, seeing it. Tears filled her eyes. That's right. The tattoo was of Emerson's handprint. In black capital lettering, it read "Daddy's Princess." In normal lettering, it said "Emerson Bernadette, May twenty seventh, o seven." My god, Amy exclaimed, grinning. I love it. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad, she murmured, blinking sleepily. I love you. I love you too, babe, he whispered happily. He could finally enjoy Father's Day. The end. The Scrub Radio, brought to you in part by 2001's Humor. I went to Arby's, I order a beef and cheese, what I want and I need is the real life Mickey. Her ass is nice and full. She said it's kind of fat. I busted in her without wearing a jammy hat. Those nude pics I see make me feel so funny. I wish that she'd shoot a leg show spread with me. She says that she was young. She did them for the cash. I wonder if she knows I stare at her beef and hush. Mickey's got a big ass like a centaur. I tear it up like a vegan at a salad bar. Let her pants my dick's in a trance. Mickey, I love you. Proud sponsors, Press and Crap Radio. Hello, everyone. This is your Action News reporter with all the news that is news across the nation on the scene at the supermarket. There seems to have been some disturbance here. Pardon me, sir. Did you see what happened? Yeah, I did. I was standing over here by the tomatoes, and here he comes. Have you seen that Burger King now has salty snacks in the convenience yeah. store? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try them right here for us. There are no Funyuns, I'll tell you that. These are terrible. Although I they think have... they may actually have more onions in them than the ones uh -huh. you get at the restaurant. <laughs> A 
Slim Jim factory has exploded in North Carolina. Okay. Well, that would be sad. Right. Mm -hmm. You should keep up the happy news. I'm gonna come down with my entrance music. You should come out to this as entrance music. <laughs> Escorted to the ring by Aaron Morin. <laughs> Panty shot! Did you see it? <laughs> oh, that, that is better than Pete Burns spinning round and round. This is great. You could also come to the ring escorted by Marion Ross or Anson Williams. I'd bang Marion Ross. Which, uh, uh, it's kind of a... Boo! I always hated Al. Always liked Arnold. Were you an Al or an Arnold person? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fellas, it's me, uh, Mike Chick. How you doing? You back there in the studio? Can you can you hear me, fellas? Uh, Are you reenacting Apocalypse Now? I am actually at the Cedar Rapids Air Show. I'm high above the air show, looking down on the people. I'm in the WWCR party copter, doing a live in the sky remote. Fellas, have you ever been to an air show? Enjoyed uh, enjoyed something like that? I've been to many air shows over the years. It's kind of a staple thing I like to do. I remember the very first air show I ever did. This would have been earlier in my career. Of course, uh, it was not flying a helicopter at that very first air oh, show. Broadcasting live from the Hindenburg disaster, eh? Well, I, I, I was. I, at the first air show, I really did believe that the dirigible would be the transportation mode of the future. Sad to see uh, there are no dirigibles at this show. Uh, uh oh, that that doesn't sound good, fellers. Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> Quite sure what was wrong with the uh, with the whirly bird I was flying, and uh, but I landed on the ground just fine. I uh, I'm safe and sound, largely due to the fact I, I don't know if I had ever mentioned, uh, have I ever told you fellers about when I was working the uh, the traffic report circuit back in the day. No. I was working, uh, I was working the, uh, Chicago market, uh, was the traffic reporter there. Of course, lots of traffic. Lots of traffic in the Windy City. Didn't work there as Mike Check. I actually had a different name there. I worked as... <laughs> I worked as the Eye in the Sky Henry Hawkeye. Uh, Hawkeye I in the sky. The drunk cast! Show up early. Maybe you'll see the Midnight Rose going out of water slide with Mantar and PM News. Mm -hmm. That would be fantastic. Speaking of fantastic, I actually got an email from a fellow crapper who informed yeah. me that I bet that's not taken.com is in fact not taken. <laughs> 